Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video. I hope you find it to be an absolute blessing. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thumbs up. We are a group of Bible believing Christians. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. And that's what we do on this channel. I'm going to talk out loud about uh, a bunch of things. Probably the rapture, the tribulation, the times that we're in. And, you know, just amazing the world we live in today. And we're going we're, we're gonna to walk through some things I hope is, is a blessing for you. So to start out, you know, our blessed hope is the rapture. Uh, we're all looking for We're all looking up. There's a crown of righteousness for those that do. And in the meanwhile, we wait. And we live in a crazy world. You know, what a politically correct, crazy world we live in. People throw around the word racism freely or bigot. Nobody wants to talk about God and Jesus. You know, you pass out... You can pass out tracks. You might get one out of ten to say, to talk to you about, you know, what you're doing. Otherwise, it's, don't bother me, son. Don't bother me. It's, it's a tough time we live in. It, uh, according to Second Peter, it talks about First Timothy. Talks about just people waxing cold and, and not wanting to just to stay with sound doctrine. Right? They they've fallen away from that. Yeah, the the early first the first century fathers, a lot of them, like a. Um, Erasmus is one of them talked about the apostasy being the time of the tribulation they, they use that word apostasy to mean tribulation so that's interesting something I learned you know possibly this week you know a different way to look at the apostasy because during the tribulation there will be nothing godly right it will all be mark of the beast antichrist worship image and just an evil world left behind after the church is taken now, there will be people that get saved in that time because they're willing to die for their salvation. Unlike today, it's salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's a free gift. So get saved today. If you're not saved, most important decision. Let's not hold that off. We're in the church age. It's still a period of, you know, it's the easiest time to get saved. You just have to believe with your whole heart that Jesus, he died on that cross. He buried and rose from the dead. Amen. And that blood atones and washes away your sins, your past, present, future sins, all of them. And, and one go, Jesus is the perfect, but he was the God in flesh form, the Messiah, the Lamb, uh, without blemish. He never sinned when he when he was on the earth as God, and he laid down his life for us. So it's a free gift. It's a, it's a beautiful love story. It really, it really is. And, you know, one of the things that, 
you know, I always think about is, you know, one day we'll get out of this this mortal body, this body full of sins. The old man, we can put them off, put them away. When you get raptured, there'll be no more sins. You can't sin anymore. Amen. We'll be head off the judgment seat of Christ, but I'd much rather deal with that than deal with more time down here. And if the Lord tarries, you know, I think, you know, and I don't know where you guys are, but as the world turns into one world ecumenical religious system under the Catholic Church, after the, under their banner, basically, I have a feeling that there's going to come a day where, in certain nations, if you don't, if you don't proclaim the Catholic Church as as your mother, they're going, you're going to get, you could get killed or tortured for your belief. And you know that has happened in the past. To say it can't happen in your country would be a little naive, since it happened during the Reformation, since it happened in different time periods. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully the Lord doesn't tarry. We know. Yeah, it's been about 2,000 years. If if he died in 31, 32, 33 A.D. timeline, then we're we're up on it. You know, we're we're within the next two three years of a rapture, and assuming that's a seven year tribulation, which there is, to come that week of Jacob's trouble, and God will turn His program to the Jews and away from the church, and out will go. You know, thinking about that, you know, imagine what God could do to leave leave terror behind you certainly could do it you know if the rapture happens imagine being in a grocery store and with hundreds of people and let's just even say like 30 of them are saved you know they'd each leave a lot of blood on the ground It'd be a mess i could just see people cops showing up and you know a bunch of people in shock i couldn't imagine the the horror of of you know maybe even being in like a church when it happened and you know there's only a few people not saved and man they're just sitting in a pool of blood at that point and because all, all these people go, you know, when they're alive, and, and it makes me wonder. Again, I talked about this before. Will there be an interval, a warning? You know, when that first part of the rapture hits, the the dead in Christ grave cannot keep them down. They'll come out. Their bodies will come out, meet their spirit in the air, as that they come with the Lord and, and with Michael the archangel to meet their bodies in the air. And then that second part of that. Or we which are alive and remain, the mortal shall put on immortality, and we shall be changed in the in the moment of a in the blink of an eye at the last trump. Uh, you know that trump, voice of, trumpet voice of God, that sound that God makes, it says, "Come up hither." I wonder if there'll be an interval of an hour, a half an hour. Imagine if everybody in the body of Christ worldwide got that got that notification. You know, the first sound of the uh, one of the trumpets goes off and. The dead in Christ rise, and, and you know you're you're next, and you got an hour or a half hour. What do you do? What do you do with that time? You got street preach. Uh, you know, what do you what do you do with your time? But but anyway, that could, it could happen that way, and I believe there could be an earthquake when they when these graves open up, and the world will hear thunder. I believe John chapter eleven shows it well, where you know we had a we had a sound of a voice coming from heaven, and some people heard that as thunderings and some people heard the voice and some people thought it was a voice of an angel and um, but not everybody heard that and I think the, the lost won't hear what we hear they, they just won't and I think that that's going to throw the world off and I know the elites the, you know, the world will have an excuse the UFOs the you know, whatever it is they'll project blue beam they'll use something they'll use something but a man wanted it, what a scene. You know, we know flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But flesh and bones, Jesus said, look at me. I'm a, I'm, I have flesh and bones. I'm a spirit. In other words, I'm not a ghost. Don't be afraid. When he appeared to, to his apostles and to about 500 people after his resurrection. Amen. You know, the first fruits have come and gone. You know, those, those Old Testament saints, some of them which rose with Jesus and went to Jerusalem on a Saturday night and you know, talk about a zombie fest. There it was. But, you know, when they came out, and that's first fruits, and that harvest is, the next is the main part of the harvest, which would be the rapture of the church, amen. And one of these years, one of these days, I'm not predicting when, that sounded, you know, the trumpet's going to go. However it's going to sound, it's going to be the trumpet voice of God, and out we go. And it'll be a beautiful day for the church, and all your problems that you had down here on this, any responsibilities or, or things or worries, they'll all be gone. All, you know, you'll be out of here, and you won't need to worry about any of those things anymore. 
and that'll be that'll be a blessing, amen. As we'll be caught up to the cloud with and two and, and like to see two different groups, right? Those that were were had died before us, maybe loved ones that were saved. You meet them in the clouds, and then you meet the then the Lord will join us in the clouds, all the body of Christ, whether alive or dead at the time of the rapture. And and what a glorious reunion and appearing in the, the heavens, at least for us, it'll be a it'll be a private event to the world. I mean, they're not they're going to hear thunderings and noises and maybe an earthquake, but there it's going to be confusion and chaos down here, and it's going to be glory, glory and peace and wonderful. Uh, reunion up there as we get to go see our mansions in heaven John 14 chapter uh, verse 6 God goes to prepare a mansion for you if it wasn't so he wouldn't tell us right so it, it is so and he's going to go build that and that time is coming when the Lord's going to say to Michael let's go and to all those spirits of the, of the dead and Christ will come with and out will go out will go and then the time the worst time in history down on the earth will take over called the tribulation or billions of people will die and yes you can get saved in that time but there's going to be a lot of wonders and powers and signs and, and that are from good and evil though that you have the two witnesses 144 you have angels flying around giving the everlasting gospel to the people in the tribulation but you also have the satanic trinity that you'll have the a false prophet you'll have an antichrist figure you'll have uh the world system requiring a mark of the beast at some point in time and all this is coming to a head you know as we see the nations surround israel right and as you know it got serious for for looking for the rapture 1948 1949 when israel became a nation and since that point all the enemies have been surrounding her you know she'll be trampled down we know that satan himself will, will come back into the body of the the Antichrist after the Antichrist is murdered in the middle the point of the tribulation and and enter into that body and sit upon that mercy seat where those cherubims are and say, I am I am the Lord. Because he can't rise above the, the sides of the north. He can't get into the third heaven and sit on God's throne. So the best Satan can do is to sit down here for a very short period of time. And God will use the Antichrist and Satan to gather the to gather his enemies at the Battle of Armageddon. 200 million man army will be destroyed with the blood up to the bridal horse. And on, you know, King's Highway, and the route through to Jerusalem, and even thereafter, as the Lord will stamp with his his sword of his mouth his enemies and, and tread the winepress of those that have accepted the mark of the beast and those that are against God. Amen. And the Lord will have his vengeance. Jesus Christ will be King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Amen. He already is, but he'll be down here recognized during the millennial kingdom reign, which will be awesome. And then I don't know how many years we have, but you know, let's just say the rapture were to happen this year, and I'm not saying it is, but it's just a, if it were to happen, that's an if then statement. And then we would have 1,007 years left until the end of, of, of this earth, until the end of, of our timeline down here. And including that thousand years of that will be the millennial king, reign of Christ. So we're getting close. The end times are here. The end times are here. As Paul mentioned that the end times are, are here. And with it come a lot of bad things. Wolves in cheap clothing and wrong doctrines. And the Laodicean church age with it to lukewarm. Even Christians that are Christians aren't out doing the work of the Lord. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. It'd be better if they would do the work of the Lord. It'd be better if the church would get out and be outspoken against wrong doctrines. And, and that's why I try to point out wrong doctrines when I see them. I don't mention a lot of names. I'm not big on that. But, you know, I'll, I'll bring up different kind of uh, beliefs and so-called Christian denominations, which aren't. That's why you have that verse in the Bible that speaks of religion in our time so-called religion right it's not true it's not truth it's it's lies and fables and believing wrong doctrine and apostasies and putting i can't believe people put their salvation on the line just off of what somebody else says you know when i t when i show you verses and i'm not doing it in this video but I, I generally will list the verses on the screen and you read it right you're, you're smart enough to read the bible to figure it out as long as you come with a with an open heart 
and your mind not vexated on proving a point. In other words, your heart being in the right place to say, Dear Lord, teach me something when I read the Bible. Because the Holy Spirit's in each and every one of, of us, and we can discern truth. And, and there's different Christians in different states. There's those that have just become a Christian, and they, you know, they need milk. They're like a baby. And then there's people that have been saved for 30, 40 years and have studied their Bible 130 times through. And you could argue that they're experts and they're pastors or preachers, and you know they can handle the meat, um, you know the, the stronger doctrines, right? And I and I've laid down you know some pretty strong doctrine here in this video. So if you're newer, you know it's really just important to get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and to avoid that time of tribulation that's coming. I've done a video recently on why you don't want to go through the tribulation in the last couple of weeks. I definitely pay attention to that. It's really eye-opening when you have this free opportunity to get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Anyway, God bless. Leave your prayer request and have a great, great day. And we have a lot to look forward to, uh, even though we're getting time of, you know, sort of tribulation for the church. What I mean by that is not the tribulation period of time, but day-to-day -day tribulation that comes our way. So if you need prayers from those or health issues, go ahead and leave them. It's one of the benefits of this channel is we have a group of Bible believers that will pray for you. God bless and have a great day.